Well, Robert and I are in a all seed rape field in Cheshire and we've come here specifically to do a little exercise, an experiment in view of the fairly new 1st of May formation in Milden Ball Hill down in Wiltshire which our friend Bill um, has taken some superb pictures in a day after the formation went down so and there's some very interesting bends and so on in the plants without fracture um, so I've always had this feeling that um, oilseed rape is not a material that the hoaxes or people who would man making them would do it deliberately because it's such a difficult material and it's awful to water down you get covered in yellow pollen and so on so what I'm going to do um, is we're going to bend one manually which Bill did in the field but he, he didn't take any video uh, or any stills of the actual plant he fractured uh, so I'm going to bend one over and see how far it goes before it fractures and then uh, I have a short plank which Mary Bennett confiscated from the hoaxes when they were chased out of a field down in Wiltshire I, th I think it was in the two, 2002 um, near Carn. Uh so I've had it in my shed for a couple of years and uh, we've never used it, we've never, never even tried it on wheat which perhaps we should do but we think with this stuff, planking, it would be very, very difficult and certainly to do uh, arcs and curves to swing round a corner so just for the hell of it, I'm just going to lay a couple of straight bits uh, and see what happens with this stuff uh, we anticipate it's going to fracture and be very much smashed uh, but we'll see. Right, uh, we've, this one's got a good uh, good half inch thick, so we thought we'd select this one. And uh, as you see in the photographs uh, a bit later on, um, the Wiltshire ones and the ones I've seen in Barbary Castle in 1997 were all bent just as they came out of the ground here, in the sort of what, like a magic bend, if you like. And of course the one that Bill's got is found somewhere like a double twist in it, which you'll see later. Uh, so, we'll have a go at this one. It's got a fair bit of blue one, actually I'm rubbing off on my fingers. So we'll, we'll bend this one and see how we go. So, here we are. Still holding up at the moment. Oh, there she goes. So it's... What's that, about 45 degrees, Dave? Yes, yeah, about 45, yeah what I found before yeah, a few years ago. It's so, yeah. Snapped off at the bottom? Yes, it's virtually at the bottom. I have to get that leaf mm. out of the way. You can see. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's no way you could bend that over without snapping it. No. Um, I mean, collectively, they might share the load a bit yeah. on, on a board, and that's something we'll try in a moment, rather than pulling an individual stem. Uh, uh, I have a feeling that uh, we'll do a lot of damage. Also, there must be damage to the lower leaves and things with the board. Mm. Uh, but, yeah. you know, to me, I think uh, this oilseed rape, or caniola, or whatever I like to call it, uh, is, is a, a tough test for any uh, hoaxes. Yeah. And I think that... Um, they, they gibbet it. So I, I predict that... Uh, most of the all sea rape formations which have been found and reported are more likely to be genuine than uh, made with the guys with the planks and the rollers. Right. This is the, the implement which was confiscated from the is quite a simple piece of wood which you it with the, uh, the rope threaded through and knotted. And so what they usually do is right foot on the board, hold the rope tense, taut, and go to the edge of the crop. So here we go. Oh. Well that took a lot of pressure to push that and it's I think it's fractured it. Uh, not bent it because there must be resistance from the plants behind, which again you probably wouldn't get with wheat and things, but just, I'll try the board a bit higher up. Oh well. <coughs> I don't think I need to do much more, to be honest. No, I think that that's uh, pretty conclusive, Dave. What have we got? Now there's some uh, 
fraction there at the base there, split there. Um, yep. Yeah. Move the smaller things out of the way. Yeah. Is that one that's fractured up under here? Yes. Hold it over there. And there's a tremendous board mark there where it's great for split. See that one there? Yeah. Get there. But the thing you noticed was a tremendous uh, resistance there, didn't you? Know? Yes. So I don't think I could do anything of any size. Um, try another. I'm going to get some further. Okay. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I can't even get the next. Yeah. Like okay, I think that's probably far enough, Dave. <laughs> so, what's uh, what's the result of that? Well, yes. Well, the physical bruising. The board slid on the stem. You know, slipped as I'm doing it, and. Uh, Fractured. Yeah, indeed, yes. Fractured there. And I guess most of the major stems will be. Yes, fractured there again. And Brute's like bleeding that there. Yeah, yeah. Bleeding. It's, uh, it's very traumatic for the plant anyway, isn't it? Oh, yeah. There's no, uh, there's no gentle laying at all involved. No. And my God, what a job to try and lay a... A huge circle. Yeah, yes, well, that's, that? let's say just a hundred feet one. Yeah. Uh, would be a job. I mean, the Barbara Castle one in uh, yeah. '97 was something like 150 feet, as I remember, with all the crescents and a beautifully spaced. So, I mean, how do you get the curve and do a nice, neat shape? Indeed. Because of this stuff, and it and it catches a bit against each other. You know, the stems they lock. You know, the sort of. So different from a, a, a cereal crop or yeah. the wheat, yeah. where you've probably got some control. So, well, certainly when it's uh, when it's as mature as this, um, it's a very difficult crop to work with, isn't it? Yeah, so I'd say it's pretty impossible from that little exercise. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, and then when we look at the uh, pictures Bill took uh, the other week down in Wiltshire on that what uh, Golden Ball Hill one. Um, it's chalk and cheese, the difference, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. So, yeah. so I think the, the case is proved. Yes. Very good. Now, right. excellent. Right. So we've had a board meeting on that, and I think... Yeah. <laughs> this film will be sent to the police now. You'll be getting a call next week. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me, my lud. <laughs> Very good. Right. We'll, OK. We'll... On the 1st of May 2005, this oilseed rape formation occurred at Golden Ball Hill, Alton Barnes in Wiltshire. The day after its arrival, our good friend Bill Betts drove down from London and took these excellent ground lay photographs. This photograph is so important. The flowers in the laid crop appear to be undamaged. They are evenly spaced just as they are in the standing crop. Compare this gentle laying with our stomping board experiment. Bill's inclusion of the lady in this photo shows us that the oilseed rape is at least as high as her shoulders and therefore as mature as that used in our experiment. Note how the laid flower heads are undamaged. Mechanical stamping could never achieve this appearance. Also, note the single stem left standing in the laid crop. A stomping board would not have missed this single plant. Once again, cast your minds back to our stomping experiment and try to imagine how we might have created this beautifully laid circle with undamaged and evenly spread flower heads. We simply couldn't do it. Unfortunately, Bill was not the first person in this formation and there are a few broken stems. 
but the vast majority were unbroken and displayed what have become known as magic bends. We firmly believe that this gentle bending of the brittle stem is a direct result of the application of heat to the plant and yet another example of the mysterious forces manifesting in our fields. So what are these mysterious forces? And could Bruce Cathy, the New Zealand airline pilot, be on the right track when he wrote about a worldwide energy grid linked directly to UFO activity? Let's take a look at what we found in the Nautilus formation at Pusey. Getting an ionising radiation me reading, which is twice the normal background level from the natural radiation from the cosmic bombardment we get. It doesn't seem to make any difference whether I pull the, the probe down to the ground or several you know, feet above. It doesn't make any difference. Suddenly gone up to five plus there, changing scale. And now that's between nine and ten microsieverts per hour. And the, the count is really buzzing now. So, so are we safe in here, Dave? You can probably, the microphone can probably pick it up. So it's on the yellow scale, so it's like 9 microsieverts per hour. Where the normal dose rate <coughs> is normally around 1 on the green line at the bottom. So I've had to change scales. If I go to the bottom scale, you'll see the meter will go off. So what is going on? Mm. So I can't have we really bombarded by either alpha, beta, or gamma rays something that's residual in the crop <clears throat> or is it something else it's affecting the instrument and giving a false reading but as you can hear the counter going yeah. and go back to the bottom scale and you'll see it go off mm. five plus there's no doubt about that Dave mm. Mm. Which is a bit of a worry, you know, is yeah. something harmful here, mm -hmm. genuinely, or is it some other freak effect on the instrument? Mm. A few days later, we entered this equally genuine formation at Etchelhampton. It's known as a Celtic cross. The general flow is coming this way, but where this anomaly is, the um, energies come round that side of it, and then come round here, and then it's gone against the direction of the uh, prevailing flow. As you can see there, the seed heads are going away from me. Whereas the main flow is coming towards me. The, the crop here is actually going in the opposite direction to, to the main flow of the crop. And when we lifted this up, we can see that even the seed heads uh, underneath the lay, the top lay, have been turned round to go in the direction of the flow up there. Does this suggest that this feature was done first? Uh huh. Yes. And there's a spillover of effect. It carries on. Until the 
influence of the influence of the centrifugal effect of whatever it is. Yeah. It's carried about the, just a bundle about that wide. Yes. Into the edge and it's collided with the edge. That's right. And it goes these, across there. These ones are on top, so the main circle has been done afterwards. That's right. That's our opinion. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so uh, all this crop was uh, laying down naturally like this mm -hmm. as we came. And then, uh, as we observed, we pulled out to observe what was underneath it. And we can really see the conversion of both of them right here. And it's bent more than even 90 degrees back toward the energy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, to, to in, 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 uh, yeah. And same again this way, you know, so it's really converging both of them and pull back into one way. Absolutely, and the seed head there, yeah. it's not even broken. No, this it, one is a little bit bent yeah, uh -huh. by the force, but we can see a few of them that naturally bend that way without being forced by anything else. Yeah. It's really bent yeah. by some kind of energy. It's not, Absolutely. It's not being yeah, I broken. understand. It's not being broken, it's really being not pushed that way. Yes, that is... No, it's no, no uh, physical force to it, it's more like... Yeah. Melted that way. Ah, you got it. Yeah, that's very good. That is excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. There's no way that uh, you could stomp that to, to do that. That's that's amazing. That's no way, no no way men can can do that. No, no. Excellent. Well done, Francis. Francis, well spotted. <laughs> be a little skeptical, we could say, yeah, well, this one is broken, and if we pull it back, it stays back, okay? Yeah. All right, in the conversion of both of them. Mm -hmm. But what's amazing is when we see this one, it springs back. So if I take this one out, yep. out of my way, mm -hmm. and I pull this one neatly out, and I want to see if it does the same, I, I can notice, I do notice that it springs back. Indeed. So it, it means that it really has been been fixed fixed that way yeah. by some kind of energy so it's not like this one would come back and stay like we could say yeah somebody broke it that way now this one is really being formed that way yes yeah That's now it. our good friend uh, Francis um, has got the uh, Geiger counter and he's uh, testing the reading outside the formation um, now we've had some incredible readings just here as Francis was standing in the middle um, circle, the readings went up from 0.5 right through up till they reached a top reading of 12, which is tremendously high. And then, in uh, the space of just a few seconds, the reading, uh, after being at 12 for uh, perhaps 20 or 30 seconds, dropped right back down to 0.5 again. And now we, we cannot get any readings above 0.5 or, or 1 in the formation. That's normal background radiation. Yeah, so, so it's a transient energy that is coming and going in this formation. Back to 4. Which yeah. is just the same as we got in the Nautilus. It appears though that it is now beginning to build slowly. And it's up to 4, is it, Francis, at the moment? Well, no, no, really, it's nothing. On, it's normal. No, no. Completely normal. No. Right. In the green scale, on the green scale, and earlier was 12 on the yellow one. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Amazing. Yeah. It is. So, uh, Evelyn here, uh, when we came in into the circle, well, uh, we didn't feel anything particular. Uh, while I was monitoring, I could see on the yellow scale, it was already up to six or seven. Mm -hmm. But it may it maintains to six, and uh, we were walking around this way and suddenly she felt really really sick she had to get out because uh, probably anyhow that the scale on my readout was going up more and more and uh, she had to get out she really felt bad and she yeah. even cried a little bit because she was uh -huh. feeling bad she yes. had to get out and uh, I kept monitoring and I went back to the center and uh, it went slightly more and more up up to eight then I was starting to tell you guys it went up to 8 and then afterward it even went up to 12 yes and then when it went up to 12 that was it that's it 12 microns. fell down to 0 yeah. and never moved anymore that's right that's and I went out the circle yeah all the way to the cars uh -huh. and went back like a new guy yeah. like a new person uh -huh. who came from, from the first time 
still nothing. That's right. And, and the scale is still. That's right. The reading of, of the green yeah. one still uh, below below one. That's right. Below one on the on the green scale. Exactly. So nothing no more. No no. And and Evelyn is now feeling okay. Yeah. Now the energy has gone down and she's able to re-enter the circle. In July 1998, David took a Geiger counter into a large formation by Silbury Hill, where the readings were completely normal. As he walked back down the field towards Silbury Hill car park, he noticed a small flattened circle of perhaps three feet in diameter. David lowered the Geiger Muller tube into this small circle, expecting to find no change in the reading. He was taken completely by surprise, as the slow audible clicking of the instrument changed to a high-pitched scream, reaching meter saturation of 2,000 counts per second in around 30 seconds. The result was that the Geiger Muller tube was damaged beyond repair.